questions for you, all right? Sounds good. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am very excited to be here today to be able to show you some of the new functionality in Pro Tools 10. Some of these features have been in development for over two years now, and it's really exciting to be able to reveal them to the world here. So, I, I want to start by talking about some editorial things. What we have here is a, we've got a Pro Tools session um, running an Alicia Keys track. Uh, I'm just going to play you a bit of it so you get a feel for what we're working with. It's about 60 tracks of audio, and then we'll take a bit of a deeper dive into some, into some editorial things. So, first of all, I'm just going to play some back. <laughs> Now, as I say, I really want to talk about editorial workflows. So the first thing we're going to have a quick look at is um, some of the vocals here. So I'm just going to solo this up and see what we've got. Okay, so now if I make a selection, I'm going to put a crossfade in. And the first thing you're going to notice is there's no more rendered crossfades. So Pro Tools 10 brings a brand new real-time fade architecture to Pro Tools. And along with that, comes a new uh, crossfade view as well for this overlapped crossfade. So if I zoom in, you can see you can now really see what the individual con um, contributing parts are to the crossfade, both fading in and out um, of each individual fade. For example, if I were to uh, take this middle section and mute it, you can see now we get the fade out, the fade in. This kind of thing was never possible with rendered fades because it would create a tiny file for each of these fade sections and it would have to play that file back. There was nothing happening in real time. So you can see immediately it's much faster to create fades. It's much faster to work with fades. If I want to nudge things around, you see I can nudge under here and it's not having to recalculate anything. If I want to move fades around, I can move them. Nothing is being recalculated. Everything works in real time. A much faster way of editing. If you're putting edits across 96, 100 tracks, it's instant. No more waiting around for fade files. So that just makes editing faster. But the next new feature really brings a whole new world to editorial and Pro Tools. Um, a very commonly requested feature is something called clip-based gain. And we've introduced that in Pro Tools 10. And not only have we just done a simple implementation of it, we've really taken it to a, what I believe is a new level. So let's just have a quick look at some of the features. You can see down here in each clip, we have a little icon, a little fader, and a little 0 dB sign there. Now, I can easily turn that on and off should I not want to see it. But if I do, once I have that, I can then click on this and a fader will appear and I can adjust the level of the clip directly from my edit. David, a quick question. Yes, Chris. I was the designer of Pro Tools. Yes. I would want to be able to do that while you're playing the track back. Well, but can of we course. Do that? Of course we can. So, as I play this through. So you can see you get real-time responsiveness, um, and it, as I say, with the um, real-time fades, it really allows you to get in there and see exactly what's going on. No more kind of guessing and adjusting things. So Clipless Game really is this amazing um, tool set for the editor, but it's not just about this simple gain adjustment. We've also um, gone in a lot more in depth, and actually I can uh, again use a keyboard shortcut to turn on a clip gain line. And now within this line, if I zoom in, you can see each clip has a line that goes throughout the crossfade. So even within crossfades, all contributions are adjusted by gain. I can now use standard breakpoint editing. So if I want to add a breakpoint there, bring it down. I can even use the pencil tool. And you can see as I draw things in, the waveform is adjusting in real time. So you're getting this real-time feedback about exactly what's going on. And of course, this is pre-processing, pre-fader, pre-everything. This is a truly editorial tool. Um, so, you know, even if I turn off the clip gain line, my waveforms are still adjusted. Turn it back on and I can edit more as well. Um, and of course, you know, if you're working in a, a post environment, you can bring clip gain values across from Media Composer into Pro Tools, so we get that full round trip workflow as well. There are also a lot of um, keyboard shortcuts 
because we were really focused on the usability and ease of use of this function. It's got to be a natural part of editing. So when you're actually editing, fading, cutting, chopping, you need to be able to do it all from a single view, which you know I think we've achieved quite nicely from here.